Chelsea when we were playing cap. Went to bed as normal. I felt a terrible back pain. I thought, what's that? He was just not himself. His legs were shaking. He was like, look at my legs. Got to the hospital. I think instantly they knew that something wasn't right, so they rushed us through. Drips were going in, and, and it kind of just happened so quick. Everybody was there as if by magic. The nurse came running after me and said, You've got to come back. You've got five minutes before theatre and you need to say goodbye and this kind of thing. After we've realised he had a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm, we know that he has maybe a one in two chance of surviving. But he was in a centre where we offer endovascular surgery, which is keyhole surgery. We have to rely on every single member of the team communicating quickly. The lady on the front desk, every sort of hour, poked her head out the door and said, no news yet, he's still in theatre. And then at about quarter past ten, she came and said, um, the surgeon's here, we'd like to speak with you. He told us exactly what he'd done, what had happened. And by ten o'clock that evening, they'd taken him off the ventilator and he had a cup of tea. It looked like mayhem to anybody else, but the people was just doing a fantastic job, really. All of them, right through from the first person we met, and on and on and on, right the way through. It was like being in a real-life episode of Casualty, in real time. It was amazing. Everyone, amazing. Be lost without them. I'm a police officer in Surrey Police. I was at work and I was actually running down the stairs and on the landing I swivelled and I found a crunch. I got a slot, an early slot, at Ashford. I came in and I was operated on in the left knee and leg. They conducted a graft from my hamstring. I was well looked after. The facilities were very clean and the food was good. After the operation, I had restricted movement regarding the bending. The physio department gave me a very good plan of what needed to be done. One of the great things at Ashford uh, is that we've got a, a lower limb class, which is a, a circuit class where patients can come on a weekly basis. We can actually see more people at, at once, but still give them the one-to-one -one time that they need. The physios understand that I need to be fit in my employment definitely affected my ability to drive and use the clutch on police vehicles. I could easily have been sort of just, yeah, you walk in, thank you very much, move on. What the staff here have appreciated is that if I don't get fit, then I could be out of a job. And that really helped me. I saw a definite improvement which allowed me to come back to full duties. So thank you. During the night, Jen's waters broke. And when we got here, on the 25 week point, Jen had the twins, um, Isabel and Olivia. Unfortunately, after 14 days, Isabel passed away. She, she had a nemophorax, which was a collapsed lung, but on the, the other side is we've got Olivia and she's been absolutely fantastic. So do you want to talk as well? <laughs> Words can't explain what the level of service and that that we've got here. Everybody's been so caring, they were so understanding about our situation. The nurses see this sort of thing happen every day and as a young parent you haven't got a clue what's happening, you just see your baby in an intensive care unit, all the alarms are flashing and you don't really understand it. Last year we nearly had 800 admissions and for us every one of those is precious. We involve the parents in all the baby's care and just little personal touches, involve them from day one in changing the nappy and holding the feeds and coming out for kangaroo cuddles and we actively promote developmental care. It's just an emotional roller coaster up and down and they explain that from day one, it's never going to be smooth, you know, and 
They're just always there for you, aren't they? Yeah. And all the nurses know exactly what's happening with all the babies from their briefs that they get in the morning. Even if your nurse has gone on a break, you know, and, and a nurse is covering, you, you always know you've got that, that standard of care. We've got Olivia now, but if it wasn't for this place, she, she wouldn't be here. I couldn't have wished to be anywhere better, really. Everything that we do here at the Trust is, is designed and organised to ensure that the patient is at the centre of everything. The most important thing is that we put patients first, and we put patients first uh, at every stage of the care that they have. In an acute environment, sometimes it's quite hard to make the patients feel that, you know, they are being put first all the time. What we don't want is where people feel like widgets, if you like, going through a factory. This is a very personal and intimate experience. We've done lots of work to make our patients feel that, you know, they are the centre of what's going on. For the patient to see the same nurse every hour throughout their shift, it means the patient has a chance to build up a bond with their nurse. Patients have very small appetites. We therefore have to make sure we get enough nutrition into the small quantities of foods that patients do eat. We've put a lot of work into analysing the menus to make sure that they do provide the nutrition requirements of all the hospital patients. Hygiene and infection control are paramount to maintaining patient safety. We know that our patients are getting good care, that we're maintaining what's expected of us from an infection control point of view. You know, we audit that. Our aim is to have an environment and a culture so that you feel cared for and safe and you feel that your voice is heard in discussing your treatment and care and that staff treat you with compassion and with empathy and address your specific needs as an individual.